basic truism is this, right? That changing demographics is going to change the culture, right? That's, and usually culture doesn't change very quickly, right? It often doesn't change at all. But if it's gonna change, it's gonna change in part because demographics have changed or because institutions have changed. And in this case, we know at a minimum that demographics are changing. So what kinds of changes in culture are we gonna see? And what ramifications for politics might those changes have? Millennials, as emphasized by PRRI here today, are in fact the leading edge of the demographic change. We know many things about them. They are less white than previous generations. They are less religious than previous generations. So all of this makes me start to think, and many of you I'm sure as well, start to think about how social identity will shape American politics in the future. That is, when we're talking about social identity, that little mental list that we all have in our heads of here are the different characteristics of me, and here are the ones, if I list them in terms of how important they are to me, that really define who I am and in the political context help me understand what, where, what I'm for and what I'm against, or which candidates I want to vote for and which candidates I don't want to vote for. Clearly we have polarization. That polarization around social identity has made older folks, white folks, rural folks, traditionalist folks, and to an extent, based on these data, less well-educated folks, um, increasingly feeling left out, increasingly feeling squeezed, disenfranchised, et cetera, and of course, that sort of thing often leads to mobilization. And we see that, I think, to an extent in the Tea Party movement. We see it to an extent in the very sharp and profound political divide that exists right now between urban contexts and rural contexts. Um, meanwhile, um, the social construction of what it means to be religious has been dominated rather profoundly for really about three decades or more at this point by the religious right. And that isn't some kind of conspiracy, right? It just, that's the way things have gone for the last 30 plus years. In this sense, the culture wars may in fact have trickled down in some sort of way to the mass level. And the empirical evidence of that, as both Bill and EJ noted in their remarks, is evident in the fact that theological conservatism is very tightly correlated with social conservatism, but not with economic conservatism.